Hey, Lisa. Hey, Lisa. <clears throat> Lisa, get your coffee. <laughs> I could do. <laughs> I gave it up and and then I was like, you know, I still want my coffee. Like I just want it. So I had to like, you know, drink hella water and take herbs and heal my body in a different way. And then I could like allow myself to have coffee. Tea? Tea works, but it doesn't taste the same. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. So did you got did you get to watch the replay from before? No. No? Okay. There is a replay on YouTube, but it's not as rich because we didn't have it wasn't like recorded with all of us. So I'm making sure that I'm recording all of us together so that way I get your um your questions and stuff. So if you don't want to be recorded for the event which begins in 5 minutes, you can go ahead and take yourself off the screen because that's what's going to be posted on YouTube. Okay. Cool. Other than that, hope you've been really good practicing your meditations and your different tools that resonate with you. Ah, I'm excited. We'll go over December and what the energy looks like in December so that you guys, you all can, you all can tap into the different transits that's happening. I'll tell you guys what, uh, what self care stuff is necessary for this month based off the energies. So it will be good. It's freezing in here in my office shed. You have a she shed? I have a she shed. It's about seven and a half feet by five and a half feet. I just did this a couple days ago. I have tile right outside this door. Um, and I'm going to be putting in a window. Hello, Mari. Welcome in. I'm going to be putting in a window right across from me. And it's a huge window. It's almost the entire wall. So... If you're down to do some construction projects, holla, I'll be doing that this weekend. We're gonna be finishing my fence and hopefully I can get my window in my office shed up. It's like, let me know, I'm always free, kind of. Yeah. Oh, kind of. All I have to do is move shit around and I'll have time. Okay. Um, if you're free, like, what's today, Sunday? So anytime this week, really, uh, I'll be working on it. So if you're like, yeah, I'm bored, you can come on through. We have tons of fencing to do. It's easy. We did the hard part. So no setting posts, just have to put up the panels and good to go. And then staining. Oh, setting post isn't that bad when I did it. Girl, I don't, it's clay on our land. We have like hard ass clay mud. It's rich. It's gorgeous dirt. But it's really hard to get an auger down in that. <laughs> so. Well, I used the iron pole to dig mine out. So an iron pole. Yeah, like twenty six or thirty two pounds. Okay. Like a spare thing to break the cement because we had old um, posts that we were oh. just replacing. Oh, a cheat stick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we so have those, but it doesn't work on this clay. 
<laughs> it we, works on clay, but you have to dig. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> that was the hardest part. I was like, we had the auger. We had the two-man auger and you just <laughs> drill into the earth. But I was so tired that day. Like my muscles were just weak. Uh, that's not fun, you know? Yeah. They, they say nothing comes without um, work, right? <laughs> Or hard workout. I'm ripped. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just started working out again. So how have you been with your workouts? Workout? What's that? <laughs> Sit ups and the push ups and yeah, I need my I was getting sloppy, so and feeling weak and just like my mind wasn't optimal, not operating at an optimal level. Does getting out of bed considered as a sit up? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, no, but I was doing um, the siding to the house and there, I think there's like 66 pounds a piece. I couldn't even carry one of those. My friend was like, you think you could carry? I'm like, no. <laughs> Let's see, we got Alexis. Welcome in, welcome. Alexis Alcala, that last name sounds super familiar. I know a Yesenia Alcala, or is it Alcala? It's very similar to that. Hello, it's uh, Alcala. Alcala. <laughs> it's the pronunciation. Very yes. Cool. Where are you from, Alex? I'm from Spain. What? That's awesome. <laughs> a few friends that are in Spain. That's so. Oh, cool. really? Yes. Well, welcome to class. Nice. Welcome. Thank you. Class. Thanks a lot. I'm excited. It's 10 o'clock. Yeah. So we'll get started. We'll get started on time. And then we might have some late comers. Um, I am recording this. So if you don't want your face to be recorded, go ahead and shut yourself down. Um, shut yourself down. <laughs> Turn your video off. And um, the replay of this recording will be uh, on YouTube. So you can go back and watch it or you can share it with your friends if you find that this is helpful to you. So let's get started. I'm gonna screen share. It always takes me a minute to figure out what the heck am I doing? Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, what? Well, welcome. I am filming live from Sacramento, California. I am in my office shed that's getting remodeled. Now we have a few people coming in. Welcome, Yvette. Hey, Sylvia, what's up? Welcome in. We just got started. We haven't even covered anything yet, so perfect timing. Let me just keep this up here. All right. So again, this is gonna be recorded. If you don't wanna be recorded on the video, that's totally fine. We're gonna post this on YouTube at the end of today. All right. So today we're talking about tools for healing, specifically shamanic tools for healing. Now, before we get into what sham shamanic means or what shamanism means, I just want to give you a brief overview of who I am and why I do what I do. Um, if this is your first time ever seeing me or uh, getting into one of my classes, welcome in. I'm so glad you guys are joining. So first, before we get, begin, welcome in everybody. Um, I have been teaching for over 10 years. I've taught everything from like kindergarten through college level courses or workshops, um, classes. I've taught everything from art to history to English, which is my favorite subject to teach, English as well as the healing arts. Um, I love to teach government and I love to teach history. So we got to get a little bit of all of that in a lot of my lectures because I like to discuss a little bit of history as we go along. Um, I have been practicing these ancient methods that I'm going to teach you three today. I've been practicing these since I was about 22, 21 years old, um, and I'm going to be 33 in a week. So it's been a little over 10 years. I've been teaching and sharing these esoteric practices for about three years. So I've been practicing them myself for over 10. And since 2017, um, I've started sharing it out. I got yoga certified. Um, I also have a 
bachelor's in English with an emphasis in creative writing, and I have studied my master's in English in comparative literature. So I'm really about my ancient classic texts, and I love to compare them to modern day science. So we get to do that a little bit in some of the courses that I teach. If you're interested in looking at those courses or anything else that I do that's um, free as well, you can check them out at my website, uplife.com. Welcome in. So if you don't wanna be recorded, now's your chance to hide your face. Otherwise we're going to put this on YouTube and that's okay because if you wanna be recorded then share your beautiful face and your light with the world, that's great. <clears throat> What is shamanic? What does shamanic mean? Well, a shaman is somebody who can access or influence that otherworldly realm of good and evil, what we'll call spirits for now. Um, so in other words, it's somebody who's psychic or clairvoyant or clairaudient or intuitive or empathic. Now, I have a belief, and it's been substantiated through my own experiences, um, that we are all psychic. You are all psychic. You all have this ability to be clairaudient or clairvoyant. Um, you all are intuitive. At some point in your life, I bet you've said, something told me to just, and then I did, and then it, it somehow worked out for you. Or um, you, somebody popped into your head and you're like, huh, I wonder why I'm thinking of them. And then sooner or later, you run into them. So these weird little things that happen are, for me, the evidence that you are in fact intuitive, you can tap into this realm that all psychics and intuitives tap into. But the question is, do we? And why don't we? Now we used to, before the advent of organized religion, I won't get too deep into that, but sometime around uh, 475 to 536 uh, BCE, um, Rome decided, the, the government of Rome decided that Christianity was going to be a really beneficial religion for this government organization. Um, and so everything sort of switched after that. And a lot of the wisdoms that we are now figuring out about today, we sort of lost during that time. So if you are interested in really getting down into this practice that I'm about to talk to you about, three different practices. I have a question for you, and that is, how good are you with the art of meditating? Because these ancient practices take, and I don't want you to leave or anything if you're like, well, I've never meditated before, so peace out. No, that's not the case here. Now, if you're not that great at meditating, it's okay, but I do want to forewarn you that having the ability to clear your head a little bit and then being able to see within your mind's eye. In other words, being able to see pictures in your mind, um, whether guided or self-guided, um, is kind of key to mastering these three techniques. So if you need a little bit of practice with this, I encourage you to go to my other video on YouTube, not now, but you can do it later. Uh, it's three techniques to make meditating easy. So if meditating has been something that you have been really wanting to master, but it's hard for you to, then um, that's the video that you need to do. Okay, welcome in Janet. Janet, and anyone have any questions for me? So far. Okay, I'm just gonna mute your video if it was unmuted. Um, but if you have a question, feel free. I'll stop every now and then to, um, to ask you guys. And also you can type it in the chat room for me. So yes, we kind of do need to have a little bit of skill in meditating. Welcome in, Laura. We're just talking about what sh shamanic means, what shamanism. Um, and it's just somebody who can access the different realms, talk to the spirits or hear spirits. And I'm not talking about like evil ones here. I'm talking about tapping into your highest form of information, your highest source of information and your highest self. So we're not tapping into any energy that doesn't feel good to us here today. All right, and we do need to have some meditative skills. So let's get into it. Three shamanic tools for healing. The first one is the pyramid of protection. Let me just sip my coffee because I'm cold. I haven't installed a heater in here, so I'm like, huh? Okay, 
What is the pyramid of protection? Why do we need it? And how do we do it? The pyramid of protection is envisioning a light around you. I like to envision it as a pyramid shaped above me and then below me that goes deep down into the earth. Okay, this helps me clear my energy of any negative attachments, perhaps um, other people's energy that I've interacted with. And I'll know that I have some of their energy because I'll be like thinking of them constantly and I, and I won't necessarily want to. Um, or you'll be getting flashes and images of things that you don't really want to think about right now. Now, I will say that in order to heal it, it does have to come up. You have to think about it and you have to address it and you have to look at it for what it is. But when we're in this space where we're trying to get clarity, it helps to address what's in our energetic field right now that we can sort of clear out so that we can tap into our highest source of information without this other information distracting us. So how do we do this? All right, we now we know it's important because we wanna close out things that we don't wanna tap into. There have been times where I have kind of heard something uh, trying to communicate with me and it's not been, it didn't necessarily feel bad. It wasn't like a bad entity. But it was this entity that was like, I want to be born um, again because I want to relive my life. And I think you'd be the best parent for me. And I want to be born through you. And I was taking a shower. This happens in the shower or when you're driving. It's like when you're in that state of mind where you're relaxed, sometimes you get those images or you get like different entities trying to tap in with you. If you're aware of this happening, it's great because then you can say, like I did, no, I don't want to have another baby. I have three. I'm good. And um, I'm sorry, but I'm, this is not my journey to help you. I know that because it doesn't feel good in my body when I'm hearing these things. So I envision, and this is a side note, not the pyramid of protection, but I envision a hole like a portal in my ceiling as I'm, you know, in my bathroom. And when I envision that portal in my mind's eye, I envision it opening up and I can see, you know, all of space and, and the universe through that hole and all the stars and stuff. And I just send that entity to the most highest source of information of love that I can send it to. And then I close that portal and I take a deep breath. <sighs> and then I relax and I let everything go that doesn't belong to me. And it's really just setting the intention. I will say this, that many of the practices that are considered mystery school practices or esoteric practices that have to do with yoga, that have to do with um, alchemy and shifting your energy, it really is a mental practice. In other words, you have to cultivate your mental strength. So it's not about what you can see with these eyes. It's about what you can see here and what you can feel in here when you do these practices. And it's about the intention that you're setting. So getting into the pyramid of protection, we get ourselves into a relaxed, relaxed state. So go ahead and do that now for me. And I'm going to walk you through this practice. And I'll let Tammy in. Welcome in, Tammy. So go ahead and take a seat, or you can lie down while I guide you through this practice. Or if this is something you're not ready to do at this time, then just listen in. And getting yourself so comfortable that in these next two minutes, your body doesn't need any of your attention. And from your lower belly, from just below your belly button, all the way up into your chest and filling your entire chest with air. Take a deep breath in through your nose and exhale from your mouth, relaxing your shoulders and relaxing your forehead and your jaw. Tapping into any sounds that you can hear in this moment. 
right? Nothing we can do about the past or the future and everything we can do right here in the present. So we'll continue to breathe naturally in and out. And in your mind's eye, I want you to imagine that you can see yourself sitting there wherever you are, or perhaps laying. As you breathe in and out, imagine that you can see yourself sitting there. And now imagine that there's this ball of light emanating inside of your chest, inside of your being. And it, this ball of light begins to grow. And this is your energy, your sacred energy that's connected to all that is and all that ever was. And I want you to drop that ball of light down your core, down into your belly and all the way to your sacral area, down the very bottom of your spine. And I want you to imagine there's this cord that comes out. And I like to imagine my cord, my grounding cord is roots, like tree roots going down into the earth. And so our roots or our core is going down into the earth through the soil, all the way through all the mantles of the earth and through whatever else you believe is within the earth, all the way to the center of the earth. And your cord is wrapping around the core of the earth and grounding you, grounding you in time and space right now. And take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, follow your cord all the way back up here to where you are in seated position or lying position. Seeing that ball of light within your body and now bring that ball of light up back to your heart space. Keep it going all the way past your throat chakra, all the way up into your head and crown chakra. And imagine that ball of light exiting the top of your head, out of your crown chakra. And now I want you to imagine that ball of light is expanding around you. And I like to imagine that my protection net of light is shaped as a pyramid above me and below me. All right, connecting me to my highest source of information. And for each of you, you're connecting to your highest source of information and grounding me with Mother Earth grounding me to all time and space. And as you take in a deep breath, exhale all the energy that doesn't belong to you. We're sending all the energy that doesn't belong to us back to whoever it belongs to. However many breaths that takes. And inhaling your energy back from all time and space. Inhaling your energy back from time and space and exhaling to relax. Envisioning that pyramid of protection around you, above you and below you. And setting your intention to keep all energy that is no longer serving you out of your energetic field and everything that is serving you within your energetic field, tapping into the power of the power that connects you to the divine source. All right, take a deep breath in and slowly begin to open your eyes. Taking a look around you and just noticing any aspects of beauty that jump out at you at this time. Remember to breathe and breathe those things in. I like to say, breathe it in with gratitude. Those objects, anything that you notice around you, pull you into this present moment. All right. <clears throat> it's about, right in this moment, setting your intention to do just what we did and have faith that you've set the proper intention any little doubt is kind of like creating a hole in your energetic field. I apologize if I'm like shivering, <laughs> I'm a little bit cold. But anytime that we doubt our intention, we kind of open up a little hole in our energetic field. And in that hole, anything can come in. 
we're sort of allowing those things to come into our field and influence what we do from here on. Let me take a sip of my coffee as you guys come back to yourselves. Mm. All right, I feel completely relaxed. I feel like we have really good sacred space amongst us now. If you feel a little bit of doubt of whether or not you've done a good job of setting your protective space, go ahead and take a deep breath in again. Yeah. Exhale it out. Your intention alone is enough. Your intention alone is enough. Now, Dr. Wayne Dyer likes to say, um, there's a saying out there, if you see it, you'll believe it, right? And what he says, and this is so true, you won't see it until you believe it. So having that faith in your ability, and this might be the first time that you ever meditated, and it wasn't a long meditation, have faith that your intention, whatever your intention is, good or bad, is going to attract to you the necessary things in your life. Now, I, I did say good or bad. I don't want necessarily for you to be setting bad intentions, such as um, the ones that we always say, which is, oh, I'm so tired. I'm probably going to be tired all day. You know, we're setting our intention for the day right now. So in this moment, what else could we do to help benefit ourselves for the rest of this day? What intention could we set right here in this moment now that our minds are clear? All right. So I hope that you are in this moment setting a clear, concise intention for your day. Just as you set the intention just now to protect your energy. And I can feel it. I feel like there's some good energy here right now. So let's move on now that we've done this. Uh, before we move on, let's get a pen and paper. I'll give you a second to do that. Let's get a pen and paper. Oh, my tips. Why do I envision the pyramid above and below? Because as above, so below. You've ever heard that saying? Um, for me, it's that which we think about in here comes down to us in physical reality. Um, if you've watched my Law of Attraction video on YouTube, I teach you the three necessary steps to mastering the Law of Attraction. And this has to do with that. Ooh, I'm freezing right now. I'm setting the intention to warm my body. So as above, so below, what we think about in here comes down to us in physical reality. Now there is, there's a time gap between what we think about in here and what we experience here. The, the time space that we're in is a little bit slower than what we can do in, in here. In here, no limits, we, we can think like a million miles per hour. So when it comes to bringing that stuff down here, the bigger the intention, the longer it might take. But the more we focus on that which we desire, the easier it will be drawn into our life and we'll be like a valley, everything will just flow to us. Now, the thing is, is if we're focused so intently on things that we don't want, our intentions are so strong still that we can attract those things that we don't want. So I encourage you, what do you want? What do you want to attract? And again, have faith in yourself. All right, so hopefully you got a pen and paper because this technique is very technical. I should have put a heater in here while it's like friggin' 50 degrees in here right now. Okay, this is called the Tho chant. Tho, not to, not though, Tho. Um, this is to help open up your third eye chakra, your pineal gland. Now, a majority of us, and I'm not saying you guys, probably if you're here today, your third eye works pretty sufficiently or it's beginning to, and you're like, 
something's going on here. I want to cultivate this a little bit more. How do I open it up? Well, the first tip I have for you is stop using fluoritic toothpaste. Okay, because the fluoride in the toothpaste, once I stopped using fluoritic toothpaste and I did this chant, whoa, let me tell you, um, if you're not ready, <laughs> if you're not ready to be clairvoyant or clairaudient, uh, don't do this yet. This is for you when you're ready to really tap into that, when you're ready to meet your spirit guides. And I'm not saying that negative entities are going to hit you up. It's really about what intentions you're setting constantly, you know, so if you are, you know, if you're filling yourself with movies and imagery of poltergeists, then, and you have a fear of those things, I would say, hold off until you get rid of that fear and you no longer fill yourself with those images, images and um, movies and avoid them altogether. Um, it's, it's true. I do think that, you know, what we put into our mind, we are opening doors to. So um, I don't like to watch those things. My husband loves scary movies and I'll watch them with him, but I'll often close my eye. I'll actually do this to close my third eye because I don't invite it in. And I set the intention. Um, if ever I feel the need to, I'll set the intention right then and there to protect my energy from those types of things. Okay, let me see what we got here. Oh, good, Sylvia. Yeah, girl, <laughs> right? Like, I am not about that scary ish. <laughs> oh, my son and my husband love it. So I, I always have to remind my son, like, you know, this is not your reality. And I, and I want to reiterate that to you. This is not your reality. And these things are not real for you. Um, so the faux chant. Okay, pen and paper. Here's how it goes. You're going to chant faux at a musical note A. I'm not a singer and I also don't play instruments. So I had to look up what's the musical note A, but it sounds like faux. And you're going to do it with a full breath. So nobody can hear you right now. Go ahead and practice that. Take a deep breath in. All right. <laughs> I'm not a singer, I'm karaoke at best. <laughs> You're going to choose a time of day. Now let's think about this for a second because uh, the last class we talked about numerology. I am not an expert on numerology, but I do know enough to where I utilize certain numbers to make things happen for me. So if you've ever studied vortex math, look up, this is your homework right here. If this is the avenue that you're going to go down and you're going to be a shaman or you already are, numerology is something that is totally beneficial for all of us. So check out numerology and I'll discuss a little bit of it right now. And also vortex math. So something that Tesla discovered, okay? Those are your hints and your homework. So pick a time of the day. I like to choose times that revolve around three, six, and nine. Why? Because in physical reality, you will not find these numbers. When it comes to making material reality, you will not find those numbers in physical reality. However, they are what, cr what creates physical material matter. Let me give you a brief discussion about that. You're in a single cell embryo in your mom's belly. You start as one, then you turn into two. You become doubled. Then you go from two to four, four to eight, 8 to 16, 16 to 32, and so on and so forth. So you went 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, right? You didn't see a 3 there. If we were to add 1 and 6, I'm sorry, you didn't see 3, 6, or 9. If we were to add 1 and 6, you'd get 7. If we were to add 3 and 2, you'd get 5. So it's really 1, 2, 4, 8, seven, five. 
and then it goes back around and around until you create physical matter. Where are three, six, and nine? Well, these are the vortex numbers. These are the numbers that are unseen, that are behind the scenes, helping to create that gravitational pull to create material matter. I know it gets a little bit physics and quantum physics and stuff, and that's why I want you guys to look up vortex math, look at what Tesla discovered, and also look up numerology. So when it comes to creating, physical reality. I utilize the numbers three, six, and nine. So if you're going to do this meditation, you're going to do it three days in a row, three days in a row at the same time each day. Hello from Cincinnati, Ohio. What's up? I've never been there, but I really want to go. Um, three days in a row, same time each day. So if you do it today after class, let's say you do it at 3.33, right at 3.33, you start your Tho meditation. You're going to do it the next two more days at 3.33 or 6 p.m. tonight or 6.30 or 9.30 or 9 o'clock. Okay, now you don't have to do it at three, six or nine. You don't even have to use those numbers necessarily for your time. But I do encourage you because there's something about those numbers. I'll tell you one last thing about those numbers. Um, if you were to take all of the known shapes in the universe, and we'll start simple, like a square and a circle. A square has four sides and each of those sides is measured at 90 degrees. 90 degrees, nine. And if you were to add all those together, it would make what? 360. And if you were to add three, six, and zero together, you would get nine. And so any angle of any shape always comes back to the number nine. So nine is the everything number and it's also the nothing number. So something fascinating. I hope that that intrigues you and you and you go down the rabbit hole of studying numerology and uh, studying vortex math and that you become a master of mass of manifesting what you want. And if you are interested, I do teach a video on that. So check it out on YouTube. All right. Musical note A is the first thing. Three days in a row is the second thing. Same time for three days in a row. The last piece of the puzzle is you're going to chant Tho six times in three stanzas. Six times in three stanzas. So that's really six times three, which is 18. So you're really chanting it 18 times in one day, in one sitting. You're doing it with your breath. So you're inhaling. Well, let me catch my breath because I'm freezing. <laughs> Then you're going to take a break, just a short break to take a breath or two. And you will start another stanza of six chants. And you will do that three times. You'll notice that the three, the six, and the nine all come into play here. And that's why I do encourage you to utilize one of those numbers as you choose the time of your day. Um, I do think it has the most benefit um, I don't know if you guys have noticed the patterns of uh, like mainstream media and the numbers that sort of occur in their in their news statements and the different numbers and dates in which um, all these auspicious events take place. I mean, you can pull up any auspicious event that most recently took place and you can find the different numbers um, that that are being utilized here and 
it's kind of interesting. It's kind of scary. And I won't go too deep into it because um, it's, it's all kind of circumstantial evidence as to whether or not these are being used uh, malefic maleficently, ma maleficently, right, or um, benefit, ben <laughs> beneficently, good or bad. I'm like, am I saying that right? I don't know. <laughs> okay, any questions for me as we move on? Because this is a very technical thing. Any questions? You can type it in or you can just um, undo your, <laughs> un, un, uh, unmute yourself. Okay, oh, I will say this. Sometimes afterwards, after you do this, and you only have to do it one time, um, like after the third day or so, you might feel pressure or tingling here, or you might even have a headache. I remember, and I think it was because my pineal gland was so calcified that I just was kind of having like lots of pressure and sort of headaches, and I was very sensitive to light for a little bit afterward. And I say I was so calcified because I had been brought up in a very religious, like very Christian religious family. And so I was taught um, things about the spirit realm that weren't always necessarily accurate. Um, and so all those influences sort of shut me down to certain things. And so it was like a big, huge thing to be awakening my third eye. Um, for me, because I was told all of this was evil. Um, but through my studies and in college and studying all the classical texts and really deep, deep diving into mystery school teachings and esoteric wisdoms, um, I began to see how very necessary all of this was, that it was incumbent upon each of us to tap into our psychic selves, because in that way, we can help heal this planet. So that's why I'm so excited for you guys all to be here to learn these tools, to heal yourself first, because it starts here, as we all know, to heal the trauma and the sadness and the suffering that's within your body. Get it out. That way you're filling your body with love, unconditional love. And then you can go out into the world and spread that to everybody and lift the vibration of this planet. That's what my brand is about, up life, up life. You are in the up life. You are not in the down life, as I like to say with my kids. Up life choices keep you in the up life and down life choices make life really difficult for you. And although we may have come from the down life and we're going into this new cycle of life now, we're in a transition period. And I'll go into the energy of December at the end of this video. So you guys know what to expect. Um, we're transitioning right now. So what better time than right now, end of 2020, the most auspicious year that we've had in so long, the transition year, the year that we feel like we're coming out of a cocoon, but we're still limited in our cocoon, but we're like, I'm a butterfly and I'm ready to be free. What better time to heal any trauma or anything that's not serving you than now? All right, let's go to our third one. We're making good time. We got about 20 minutes left. Our third practice. All right. So before we begin, I will say that you will need a drumming tape, CD, or a drumming YouTube video. The one that I am using is the one that you see on the screen. All you have to do is in YouTube type shamanic drumming or shamanic journey. Um, and this is the video that I use. Let me see if I can play it and you guys can hear it. There it goes. I apologize if I sound jittery. I am doing my best to not <laughs> be freezing. Can you all hear that drumming? Yes, okay, good. Okay, can you hear me over the drumming? Yes, cool. So the reason I'm asking you is because 
This is a simple drumming. It doesn't have bells or whistles to it. It's not like talking. You don't hear any singing. It's not like da -da! some of them are like that. Very simple drum beat. This is what helps you get into this trance like state. So before you go, let me pause this video. Before you go into this journeying technique, which I'll get into in a minute, it's imperative that you set your pyramid of protection or a net, a net, excuse me, a net of light around you. And that you also have developed now a skill to be able to see in your mind's eye. Okay, so what do you need to prepare for this exercise? You'll need your drumming tape. You'll need a quiet, warm space. <laughs> I'm saying warm because we don't want your body to be shivering like mine. You'll need to get comfortable. Um, you'll need to go to a place where nobody can interrupt you and bring a writing utensil and a journal or a piece of paper so that you can write down what it is that you see. A journey is when you intentionally go to meet your spirit guides. When you journey, you're setting your intention to either go down to the lower realm. It's not the underworld, okay? It's not like this, this um, Christian or Catholic um, or like religious viewpoint of like hell and heaven. It's different than that. It's very, it's much more fluid. Um, you're going into the under realm or the lower realm and that's where you would meet your animal spirit guides and this is where you would get um more of a metaphor metaphorical journey they would bring you on a journey and it's not altogether going to make sense it's going to be very symbolic but as you go down into that space you're going to just take in whatever it is you see so let's talk about this really quickly before i get ahead of myself Okay, on your paper, journeying to the lower realm to meet your spirit animals. Again, you're gonna get into a comfortable, quiet space. You wanna take your deep breaths from your lower belly all the way up into your chest. And as you exhale, you're going to relax your body and especially your forehead. You're going to set your grounding cord and reach down into the earth and you're going to set your energetic field around you, whether it's a pyramid or just a round net of light. And then in your mind's eye, you're going to envision, I like to envision a hole opening up into the ground like a rabbit hole, like Alice in Wonderland, because it's one of my favorites. Um, and I like to imagine that I go down into that hole very much like Alice. Now, other people like to envision stairs that they go down and they can gradually take their time going down. Some people envision an elevator that they can just pop into, press a button and go down. Whatever it is for you, it's however you wanna get down there in your mind's eye. You're setting the intention to go down and before you go down, you're setting the intention to meet your spirit guide or if you've already met your spirit guide, your animal spirit guide. You're going to be setting the intention to get clarity and understanding from your animal spirit guide. And so taking a deep breath in and exhaling out, imagining that you're entering that space that allows you to go down into the earth. And sometimes you might feel like you're just falling and falling and falling. But eventually you'll get to a space where you're ready, you've landed, and you'll know when you've landed. And if you're, if you're, I've had this happen to me once. Um, I thought if I smoked marijuana, and this was like in the earlier times of when I was journeying, when I was learning how to journey, I was like, you know, if I smoke a little pot, that'll help me. No, <laughs> it does not. Do not do this under any influences. Um, your spirit guides will joke with you and they will make fun of you. That's what they have done with me. They'll be like, uh, no lady, uh, you need to go back up and clear your energy because you're a little bit foggy. And that's kind of what it feels like, at least for me, it felt a little foggy and things weren't clear. So 
you want to be in a space where you're not drinking and you're not smoking and you're not doing psychedelics. And I know that ayahuasca can help this. Um, ayahuasca can definitely help you get a journey like this, but even more intense. Um, but you don't need it. You really don't. You can do this without all of that. And I encourage you to try before you go on that shamanic journey to Peru or something where you do ayahuasca. Um, and I have a friend who makes it. He's an amazing shaman. Uh, so, you know, if that's the case and you want to do that later on, then cool. We'll, we'll, I'll hook you up with him. But try to do this without any influences. Imagine that you're going down and eventually you'll get to that space. And when you get to that space, you're going to call forth your spirit animal. Now, for me, it was very much a confusing, confusing thing at first. Um, my very first time I, I set the intention, I said, okay, I'd like my spirit animal to come to me, please. And I took a deep breath and I was patiently waiting for that imagery to show up into my mind. And at first it showed up as a rabbit. And this was not a, a, a pretty rabbit, I have to say. It was like a hare. It had really long teeth and it had really dirty um, fur and it just didn't look clean kept. And the most important thing is it did not make me feel safe and secure and it did not resonate with me. So I immediately knew that I could feel it in my body that this isn't the right one. <clears throat> so I sent it away. I said, no, that's not it. And then a wolf appeared, a wolf's face. Excuse me. That's what happens when you're like drinking coffee hella fast. And then a wolf's face appeared and it, it wasn't, it still wasn't comforting. The face was like shifting in and out of itself. And I just, I didn't feel safe and comforted. So I sent it away and I said, no, you're not my spirit animal. And then finally, I saw this wolf walk towards me and it was a very comforting wolf and it was very clear to me and it was very clean looking. Um, and I don't know what that matters to me, but it did, it does. It matters what my animal looks like and it matters that I resonate with my animal and same for you. So if it doesn't feel good or comforting, I want you to tell it, no, no you can leave my space. Please send me my spirit animal and just repeat it over and over. And when you finally feel like the animal has showed itself to you, you can then ask it anything that you like. There's a way, a very specific way when we meditate and we are trying to gain clarity, like if you're doing tarot readings, I don't know, if, you know, message if you have ever done tarot, if you've ever done your own tarot. Um, I do tarot readings, but I don't necessarily do it for people. I will do it for people if it's something that you feel like you need, but um, I don't normally, I just do it for myself or my close friends. But it's kind of like that when you're tapping in, you can kind of feel certain things that are right. And I want you to just pay attention to everything that you feel is right. And when you're asking the question, it's usually a question like this. What does the energy of feel like. So many people usually go for relationships or, um, you know, stuff that's going on inside of them that has to do with relationships. So we use that as an example. What does the energy look like for this relationship that I want to cultivate with this specific person? And then as you take a deep breath and exhale, follow your spirit animal because they're going to take you on a symbolic journey. And you're not going to understand it right away. It's very possible that you'll be extremely confused the entire time. And that's okay. Just go with it. Follow it. Take in everything that it wants to show you. Whether it makes you comfortable or not. Because now you've established, you know, this is my spirit animal. This is the animal that makes me feel comfortable, at peace, and safe. You've established that connection. So have faith what comes to you, what comes to your mind's eye and what comes to your body viscerally and pay close attention to it. And then when you come out, you'll know because your animal will be like, that's it. That's, you know, it'll take you on a journey and you'll know it'll be done because they'll be like, it's over. There'll be some signal. Come out, coming out of your journey, you're going to write down everything. Will you always have the same spirit animal? Thanks, great question, Tammy. 
No, <laughs> sometimes it'll change up. Okay, so let me tell you what I experienced the very first time I journeyed. I was pregnant with my first son. It was, I was about 25 years old. I'll be 33 in a week. I know, right? Um, <laughs> my wolf came to me. Okay, and that was like the rabbit that didn't resonate with me and then the wolf that didn't re resonate with me. And then finally this wolf that did. My wolf came to me and walked me over to this pond. And all around me is like dark and black, but I can still make out like forest trees. And I come to this pond and sort of like this translucent pond. It's something out of like Harry Potter, like in the Forbidden Forest. It looks very much like that for me. It doesn't scare me or anything because um, I love Harry Potter and I'm not afraid of a of, of forbidden forest um, or forests in general. So it's just, this is my vision and this is what resonates with me. So it might be different for you, but Wolf took me to a pond and before I went into the pond, two alligators showed up and their eyes and their mouth popped up. And Wolf was like, go on, jump in. And I was like, uh, no because I saw the alligators. It's like, no, I'm not gonna do that. There's alligators in there. And he said, well, they're gonna teach you. So jump in. So in my mind's eye, I jumped into that pond and I shapeshifted and I was this little baby alligator and I was swimming behind these two very large alligators. And we were swimming along. And then I heard this like voice, which was, I assumed was my wolf because it sounded very similar to it was saying these are your guides these are your teachers i was like okay i come to the other side of the pond and as i exit out i turn into a yellow canary and then i fly up into the treetops oh no i see a staircase like a white staircase and i follow the staircase up through the treetops and i fly above the canopy and then that's where my vision ended um, so I had a few spirit guides here. I had a yellow canary, which I turned into. I had alligators and I also became an alligator. Um, I had a wolf in other ones. I, my wolf turned into a squirrel and I followed him up a tree and I had shape shifted into a squirrel with him. And we were going on this journey, flying from tree to tree. And, and I was like, I was getting kind of anxious because I was flying from tree to tree and we were going really fast. And then my wolf says to me, you have been jumping from thing to thing, not really taking interest in one thing and it's time to slow down. So that was, that was their way of communicating that to me. And by being able to see that vision of me as a squirrel jumping from tree to tree and not really taking notice of the trees, that imagery and that feeling that I felt was so impactful that the message was very, very clear and helped me gain a sense of clarity. So had I not seen those things, those images and felt those feelings, I might never accept the fact that I need to slow down and take notice of what's around me. So that was one of the messages I had um, way, way back then when I was like, go, 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 and just never slow down and constantly do spontaneous things. Um, let's see, what else? Keep practicing. And this, you may not see your spirit animal right away. It may not be super, super clear to you at first. But the more you establish this connection to your highest source of information, your highest source, um, the more the messages will be clear for you. Okay, and it took it took me some time. Um, I, I have to say that as a child and and all through my teen years and um, even till now, I've always had a good imagination, and imagination is key here because you can't. You can't receive messages via visual um, or auditory if you don't have the imagination for it. And that all starts in your pineal gland, which is why we learn how to open it. So I hope that's helpful to, you, helpful to you. So this is journeying into the lower realm. Um, 
before we move on, I also want to say you can use sage to clear your energy, to clear your energy in your space and to create that sacred space. So I always use sage. I'm sure many of you probably know that already or um, Palo Santo. Um, but if you didn't have those in your tool belt, get some sage, get some Palo Santo, get a space that is private to you, get your drumming tape or your actual drum, although I would encourage you to just relax your body the whole time. That way you are in a state of receiving rather than doing and giving. Um, okay, so let's move on to going into the middle realm. The middle realm is this realm that we're in envisioning yourself leaving your body and just going to perhaps you're going to give love to somebody who's in this realm for example i've done this many times with my clients um if they've told me a story of something that's going on with them and i know that it's not something i can necessarily help them with in my physical life, I have three kids, I have a husband, I have a, a property to tend to, which is like constant things going on here. Um, I have classes to teach. So perhaps I might not have the physical time and space to help this person gain clarity in that moment. And so sometimes I'll go on a journey and I'll just go in the middle realm to tap into their energy to send them some type of healing um, or some type of uh, answer or clarity from their highest source of information. Now it gets a little, I know like, wait, what? Maybe you're confused. Maybe it's a little bit too technical, but it's the same process as if you were to go down below and up above, and we'll talk up above in a minute. So you're envisioning that you can see yourself as you sit there and meditate. You're kind of stepping away from your body, envisioning first that you can see yourself in that meditative state. Right, like kind of like when you are laying in bed and you can close your eyes and envision yourself laying in bed. You can kind of see yourself laying in bed. Same thing here, same concept. Okay, of course we want to do our grounding practice, bring our grounding cord down to the earth and set our net or pyramid of protection. And of course we want to set our intention. So for me, it would be um, in this moment, I set the intention to go into the middle realm and I want to send healing energy and love to this very specific person and holding that person's image in your mind. And then as you take deep breaths in and out, giving them this energy of love and light. And what does that look like? So again, here's where our imagination and our mental focus and prowess come into play. For me, and you can, this is however you want to create your energy that you're sending out, or um, perhaps you just want to go and visit somebody and see how they're doing. Um, for me, I had done this with my grandpa when he was passing away in early February of this year. He had a lung infection. Um, it's possible that it was COVID, but we didn't know about COVID then, really. So um, I was in the hospital. And I wanted to know if he was okay. Now I couldn't communicate with his body. So instead I decided to communicate with his spirit because I could tell his spirit was around us somewhere, but we couldn't you know, access it unless we did this practice. So I sat there in one of the hospital, hospital chairs um, near his body and he's in that state. Um, you know, he's about to move on to the next realm. And we're all deciding whether we should unplug or not. Um, at this point, there's really no, there's no use in keeping him on. And so I journeyed to him and I asked him, hey, you know, he's my Tatai, I'm Filipino. I said, Tatai, how are you? And what do you want us to do? And then I heard in his voice, um, this language, which I don't know how to speak Tagalog. I don't, I haven't spoken it since I was six years old. So I heard a very, and I can't even repeat it now because I don't remember it, but I heard um, like this th four or five syllabic phrase. And I wrote it down because I was so confused. I didn't know what this meant. And I showed it to my dad and I said, 
hey, do you know what this means? Um, and nobody knew that I had done this journey to talk to my grandpa. I said, hey, do you know what this means? And my dad says, yeah, you know, it kind of sounds like um, ready and bury, like burial, like buried. He said, yeah, it sounds like um, ready and bury, like burial. And I was like, okay, I said, well, here's what came to me. And I told him what I did. I said, I just journeyed to talk to Tatai to see if he was ready. And he said this, and he was like, what? He said, can you do, can you do it again? I said, sure. I sat there, I, I ground myself and I tap in with my grandpa's spirit again. Um, it helped for me to put my hand on his foot and just to touch him, to feel his, his essence. And I just said, um, Tazai, can you give us a message to let us know that you're okay and that you're ready to move on if in fact you're ready to move on. And then he said, "In um, it wasn't Tagalog. My dad said it was like an older version of Tagalog. It was like an ancient language, ancient Filipino language. Um, and then he said in that language, because I wrote it down and had it translated, why are you still here? And my dad laughs because he goes, that's what Tata used to tell me when he would tell me to go do something and I wouldn't do it right away. He'd be like, why are you still here? Um, get your shit done, <laughs> in other words. So it was comforting to me, even though it was a sad occasion and I didn't want to see him go. At the same time, I didn't want to see him suffer. And that was the state he was in, suffering. And so it helped me to tap into that middle realm, to talk to him, to be able to tap into his essence and to see, you know, if he was ready. And that gave everybody in the room a little bit more comfort, especially my grandma who, she's a very spiritual woman. But I think that in that moment, she was overwhelmed and beside herself. And she didn't wanna make that decision, you know, for him to unplug him. So it was, it was something that was bittersweet. It was helpful for us all. And it helped us have confidence in the fact that he was okay. And what mattered most to us was that he was feeling okay and that he was fine with leaving his vessel. So that helped all of us have a bit of comfort. So you might know somebody who is going through a hard time right now and you might be able to help them of course, I want you to help yourself first because you can't pour from an empty cup. So this is for you to tap into perhaps the middle realm here to see if certain relationships are working for you, um, to see if there's anything that you can do that's within your power to help these relationships work or to see if this in fact is something, you know, whatever it is, the relationship or the job, um, the risk, perhaps, that you'd like to take in this realm, it's really up to you uh, what intention you're trying to gain clarity for. Do you guys have any questions for me regarding uh, the middle realm? As I warm myself up again. <sighs> any questions are good because one of you guys might be, you know, not not sure how to phrase it, um, not sure how to ask the question, or maybe you just don't know what the right question is. So any question is good. All right. So let's talk about going up to the spirit guides. Now, when I do this, I set the intention to meet with my highest source of information, the source that is filled with love and light. I'm very specific about that. When I journey, I make sure to say, if I'm, you know, whatever I'm going down or in the middle or up, especially when I'm going to the upper realms, I make the intention, I would like to go now to meet my spirit guides who are in the most highest, most loving place of my source of energy of this realm or of the upper realms. I want to go to my source of energy, my light beings. 
<coughs> excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. When I had first journeyed, um, I was I went to the lower realms. It was easier for me. I I think that I tried to go to see my light beings, but um, they were like, no, it's going to be easier for you to go to the lower realm and get the metaphoric or symbolic uh, journey first. When you go to your light, when you go to the light realm, which is what I call it, because for me, it's everything is just made of light. I'm, I'm aware that all the colors of the rainbow are there and I'm aware of my guides being there, but I can't necessarily make out any shapes, right? Um, so what happens is when I go up, I go, I am envisioning myself going through all these layers of space, all these layers of the atmosphere. And I'm setting the intention to go to the highest, most loving place within my being, my, and also that which is connected to divine. Um, once I get there, it's usually a place of light and I'm usually at this kind of like a picnic table in a park. Um, I can sense that the picnic table is there even though I don't see it. And I have always one guide who speaks to me and the other guides are usually there as supportive figures and I'll talk about them in a minute. But the guide who usually speaks to me is of a masculine energy. Why is the masculine energy speaking to me if I am more like divine feminine? I don't know, but it doesn't matter to me. I'm not turned off by it. Um, I think very much it feels like a father figure. And I think because perhaps I had lacked that um, for a majority of my life, it's very comforting to have this sort of fatherly figure speak to me and give me guidance. So. I have, I'll say one, even though it's not like a, a singular entity, but I have this one spirit guide who is the only one who speaks to me. It's of a ma masculine energy, a male's voice. Um, he sounds very much, he sounds very soft. He, the imagery that I get when I do think about what his, he might look like is very like Native American. It's this round face, um, very much like mine, like very round um, high cheekbones, um, like brown leathery skin and this soft like Native American voice. Um, <laughs> that's who my spirit guide is. I don't necessarily know the names of them, but um, th that's who gives me my clear and concise messages. Now, when it comes to um, like when I go up there, sometimes I'll, I'll say to my spirit guide, um, can you give me clarity in this area of my life? Um, like career or whatever, or like, I've been getting a lot of doubts and stuff and I feel like very low self-esteem right now. And could you help please guide me in this, um, area of my life and give me clear and concise messages that I need to hear right now in this time. And so, and so he'll talk to me and tell me, oh, you've been doing this and this and that, and you need to do this, this and that. And it will be something that is like, oh, I, I kind of knew that, but I've never listened to myself when I've told myself those things. Or I hesitate to tell myself those very things that I need to hear. So it comes through as this wisdom that is sort of my own wisdom, but at the same time, it's like, I would have never listened to it had I not done this journey. And then when it comes to getting things like uh, imbued with energy or cleansed of energy, that's when my other feminine energy spirit guides come in. And uh, usually they circle, they usually circle around me. Um, I've gone, you know, I've gone and journeyed to them in my weakest moments where I'm like in tears and I'm crying. And my spirit guides that are of a feminine energy, so they feel very much like a bunch of women. Um, I don't know exactly how many there are of them, but there's a good handful and they circle me and my male entity spirit guide will say they're imbuing you with strength in this moment or they're cleaning you of this in this moment. And I'll get the imagery of me in the middle and them doing all kinds of healing work for me. And when it's all over, I come back to my body and I have that clarity and I feel like 
different. My energy and my space is clear and I feel at peace once again. Um, so it's interesting how this occurs for me. Now it's not always like that for everybody. Uh, my mother-in-law, she's also a shaman. I don't know if she would call herself a shaman, but she very much is. Uh, very in tune with the other realms and she's the one who helped um, teach me these practices as well as another shaman who now is past his name is Claude Ponsoulet. Ponsoulet is a P-O-N-C-E-L-E-T -E it's French um, he's German I believe he wrote a book called Shaman Within and, um, and I got to meet him and do shamanic ceremonies with him and learn from him before he passed away. In fact, my son, who's now six, almost seven years old, uh, when he was three weeks old, he had a lump under his breast and it grew bigger and bigger. And by the time he was six months, doctors wanted to remove it. And then they discovered that it was cancerous, they said and they wanted to do chemo on him for six to nine months. Well, I wasn't having it. I felt in my being something so strong that said, don't do it, do everything naturally. And so I listened to that voice, thank God, thank the universe, thank the divine, thank the creator, thank, thank the most high, because I would have killed my son if I had done chemotherapy on him at six months old and they wanted to do it for up to nine months every other week. Um, instead, I decided to do some homeopathic stuff and I decided to take him to see Claude Ponsoulet, the shaman, to help get a, get a shamanic ceremony for him. And in that ceremony, uh, we all journeyed together and with Troy right in the middle, and he was just happy, just bright, you know, he had just got the tumor removed. Um, but they, but doctors were still saying that he's for sure going to have it come back. And so Claude went in and said that he had removed, he saw in his vision, in our ceremony, this kind of like a piece of plywood that was here. He said it was like a piece of an obstruction and he removed it. Well, my son has gone back for testing and like time and again, it's always come back clear. And these doctors were 90, and they quote, 99.9% .9 sure that this cancer was going to come back. It never did. And he's six years old, he'll be seven in March. And he's, <laughs> he's the kid that climbs walls, doesn't need anything to do it. He can just climb them. Like he's freaking strong. Um, so in this way, shamanic journey has helped my family to heal physical matter that people would look at us and say, I don't think that's possible. But here we are. We had the tumor taken out surgically. And after that, when they were pressing to do chemo, we continued to do these healing ceremonies. We continued to do homeopathic medicines and he's perfectly fine today. Um, so here, this is an example of going up into the upper realms to gain clarity. My spirit guides were tapping into me by that time. I didn't even have to journey to them. They were tapping into me and helping guide me through this. Um, and at some point I do believe that you will get so good at this that you won't necessarily need your drumming. Um, now I can, when we're in a car or something and I'm feeling anxious um, and I need answers for something specific, I'll just go and meditate right there in the car. Um, music will be on and my husband and my kids will be in the car and they'll all be talking and stuff. Um, but because I've practiced this so many times, I've gotten to the point now where I can just take a deep breath and go where I need to go and set my intention to receive the messages that I desire to receive. And so the more you practice, the better you'll become. So that's my suggestion to you is to just don't give up, just keep doing it and don't question necessarily whether what you're seeing is right, just accept it, write it down, because later on you're going to look back at those journeys you wrote down and it might all make sense to you. And that's, what's ha that's what has happened to me in the past is I wrote those alligators down and said that they were my instructors and I didn't know how that was going to show up in my world. And then it did. 
and I was being properly guided. And I'm, I feel like now I'm past that point where I turned into a yellow canary and soared through the treetops. Um, I'm, I've gone past all of that now. So I'm excited to hear what your guys' journeys look like and feel like. And um, so when you do do this, um, please reach out to me. Um, when all this COVID stuff is over, we're gonna do some in-person journeying together. And uh, we can certainly do some live because I know if you guys are in Cincinnati, Ohio and from Spain, that's awesome. I'm so glad for you guys to have tapped in today from all the different parts of the world. Um, all right, so that's it for what I have for you today. Let's go ahead and talk about any questions, comments, or concerns that you have related to these practices. Now's the time. I wanna be able to help as many people as possible. Um, I hope that I have conveyed to you the practices um, and the techniques as clearly as I possibly can. And I hope that I have given you confidence in your ability to access these different healing uh, realms. So any questions, or comments, or concerns, or maybe you've done these practices before and you wanna just share them with us. Don't be shy. Are any of you, do any of you have fear when you think about doing these things? Do any of you feel a little bit of fear and apprehension with them based off of perhaps your conception of the other realms? Anybody have any questions for me at this time? Okay, that's quite all right. Um, if you do have a question, because we, we still have just a couple minutes left, um, go ahead and feel free to ask it whenever. I'm gonna talk to you guys really quickly about the certification program that I do. Um, now it's called Emotional Intelligence Stress Reduction and Management. And this is a seven to eight week course. Normally it's eight weeks because we go on an in-person retreat together and we do all of this stuff together. Um, it doesn't say shamanic healing course, does it? No, it does not. But the thing about being emotionally intelligent and reducing stress and managing it has to do very much in my opinion with all the esoteric stuff that we no longer use, but we need to practice. So I will be teaching in this course. There's one in January. Um, it's at a discounted rate because you don't get certified, but starting in April, you can get certified. Um, in this course, you will learn how to properly meditate. So if something you want to hone in on, um, you will learn some history. You will learn about uh, the different practices that help heal. I'll teach you various meditations and other various um, healing practices. Uh, we will be tapping into um, myth as it relates to us. And so what you'll be learning in this is basically a mystery school teaching. You'll be accessing your own abilities to shift energy. I mean, I wish I could have called it like the Alchemist Academy um, because you will be learning how to shift negative energy into positive energy. You'll be learning how to create and manifest. Um, you'll be learning how to master the law of attraction. Um, and so by the end of this program, you should be able to talk to your spirit guides, to meditate, to open your third eye, to, um, to set your intentions for what you want and to actually see it come into physical reality for you. Um, so I hope that if this is something you're interested in, please holler at me. If something that you are interested in, but it's not something that you can readily afford, holler at me anyway, because my journey here is not about making a ton of money. My journey here, although that would be nice um, for all of us, right? My journey here is about helping you guys raise your vibration and making good vibes your default. And so if you've suffered from depression, anxiety, stress, um, this is the course for you because I'm going to teach you the tools how to get out of those states of mind, how to get into a state of mind that is more beneficial for you and one where you can heal 
without popping pills. I've been there. I've been told to take Zoloft. I was depressed and anxious majority of my younger life to teen years and into my 20s. And these are the practices that I utilize to help get me to a space of gratitude, get me to a space of confidence and connection, most importantly, connection to divine source and my highest source of information. Um, like I said, I've been practicing these things for 10 years. Um, like the outliers would, like the book outlier would tell you, it takes about seven years to master something, I believe, uh, 10,000 hours or seven years. Um, so I have very much mastered these techniques. I have manifested some amazing things in my life. And I believe that if you can manifest what it is you want in a physical or in a spiritual way, then you'll begin to feel more confident in your ability to create your reality. Creating your reality. That's what we're here to do in order to raise our vibration. So I do believe that if you join me today, this is your mission in life, is to help raise the vibration of the planet, not just within yourselves, but to help other people heal. Um, and if this is something that you're interested in, please hit me up and let's talk. Either way, whether you can afford it or not, let's figure out a way to get you where you need to be out of depression, out of anxiety, and into a space where you can confidently shift your energy and the energy of others and make this world a better place. All right, folks, we went a little bit over our time, but I appreciate you guys staying with me for every minute. And I hope that this helps you. Um, please send me an email if you have any questions. All right. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. You can watch the replay on YouTube and check out my other videos. They're definitely going to help you master this stuff that we talked today. Uh, my YouTube video on learning how to meditate and my YouTube video on mastering the law of attraction. I want you to get what you want because if you can do that, then you're, you're not wanting any longer and you're living in a space of joy and happiness. And then you can share that energy with others. Bless you all for joining me. Um, Yvette, Janet, Alexis, Lisa, Mari, Sandra, Sylvia, and anybody else who may have tapped out early. Uh, appreciate you guys so much. Namaste.